Lizzie, it's Felix. No, no, listen. Listen. You've got to do something for me. Hello? Richard? Oscar? Oh. What the hell are you still doing there? I told you to go. Why, are you checking up on us? You bet I am. I thought you said you'd leave for Cambridge first thing this morning. Well, Loretta already has, and I'm going up after a lunchtime seminar. Surely this is no longer an arena for a couple of amateur sleuths. All right, all right. You made that perfectly clear last night. Look, we'll both be in Cambridge by this evening. Check again if you like. I've got a dinner engagement. Oh. Uh, anything about Paul? No, not yet. I'll let you know. And promise me, no more meddling. Well, absolutely. No more meddling. Good. OK. Bye. Bye. Welcome to the Carlisle Club. May I help you? Yes. Um, I heard a while ago you might be looking for some experienced staff. Oh, domestic, yes? Sorry? Well, domestic or professional? Professional, definitely. Sport, massage or individual room service? Uh, room service. Uh, so, who do I see about an interview? Well, you see me first of all, Miss Sir. Uh... Excuse me. Good morning. Good morning, Mr Rankin. Thank you. See you. Gloria! Thank you very much. Go away. Thanks. Bye. Uh, well, actually, it was a friend who suggested I might uh, fit in rather well here. Sandra Neal. Do you know Sandra? Mrs Neal was only with us very briefly. We have a new manager now. Oh. Tony? Well, any chance we'll work with Tony? Tony Fleming? Well, why don't you ask him yourself? Oh, well, maybe not precisely now, this minute. Well, why don't I drop a line? Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll ask something. Well, well now, Dr. Bennett, I presume. Actually, um, on reflection, I think the uh, the job may be too demanding. Um, I was uh, looking for something a little more casual. Oh, we do casual, Dr. Bennett. We do very casual indeed. All the same, I'm not really sure it's the sort of job that I'm particularly looking for, not with my height. We don't want them, you can keep them. Not talking holiday snaps here, are we? No, aren't we? All right, if you're having a good time, we can keep us up as long as you like, Dr. Bennett. Or may I call you Bridget? No, you may not. And if this is about the money... Uh, I kissed that goodbye the day you went soft on that silly whore. Then why did you break into my friend's flat? It can't have been for the photos. I let him go after the money to take his mind off her. Got to keep him off the streets, haven't you? And did it keep him off the streets the night Paul Elvin died? He was at home with me and his mum. Oh, dear. But I can see why you might be anxious. It is your son's car the police are looking for. And he had at least one very public fight with a dead boy. And that was over a woman who also died in violent circumstances. Which is why we're very pleased to see you, Dr Bennett. We've got a bit of a proposition for you. Look, I really don't have time for this. Just give me a minute. Now, 
I know what you're thinking, but really, you couldn't be further from the truth. I had nothing to do with Sandra's death. And I did not kill Paul Elvin. I'd been following him, yes. In fact, I was on his tail when he left the teachers. He went straight from there to a house in Hampstead, Ashcroft Way. He was in there for hours. I couldn't hang around. So? The bloke that let him in the door. I'd seen him before. When? At the Suffolk place. Oh. So it was you that broke in there too? Yeah, trying to get our stuff back, yes. But I wasn't the only person there that night. Now, all I know is... I was upstairs looking around. All of a sudden, somebody comes in downstairs, doesn't turn any lights on, nothing. Within a minute, he's on his way out. I can see him leaving from the window. He walks to the middle of the drive, stops, picks up a shoe, a woman's shoe. He goes to the edge of the cliff and chucks it in the sea. And this was the same man that was in the house in Hampstead? Well, it was the middle of the night, but yeah, I reckon it was him. So what do you want from me? We want the book back. The book? Man, you'd think we were off for a night out in an abattoir. If only. Inspector! Dr. Lawson! I've been trying to track down Dr. Bennett. Any ideas? She should be here. There's been a phone call from Mr. Neal. Lizzie's gone missing. And he was hoping she might have turned up here again. But some cash and some keys to his place in Suffolk are gone too. When did he call? Not more than about half an hour ago. The thing is, he said his phone, his electric cut off. Where was he phoning from? London. And in that case, I can get there long before he does. Thank you, Arthur. Could you tell Dr. Bennett when you see him? Uh, yeah, no. certainly.
to me. What sort of thing would that be, Dr. Bennett? A message or a fax. A fax. Oh. This machine is not for general use, Dr. Bennett. Menno has been circulated. It's all right, all right. Oh, and Arthur asked me to tell you that um, Dr. Lawson had to go to Suffolk. Something to do with a small girl being on her own. What are you doing here in the dark? The door was open. I'm not doing anything. I just wanted to come down for a bit. I tried to phone Daddy, but the phone doesn't work and the lights don't come on. <laughs> so I see. You best come next door with me. I think I'll just wait here. Thank you. Lizzie. 